So we're here with uh, Stan Surratt. Stan is running for the City Council of Rochester, the City of Rochester. Uh, there's an election November 8th, uh, and there, as I understand, there are six candidates running for four openings, correct? That's correct. Six candidates with four openings. And how many are in, if you know, how many are incumbents? We have two incumbents, uh, Ben Giovanelli and Kim Russell. Okay. There's one appointee, Steve Sage, and there's three of us who are running, um, you know, as just general candidates, myself. Kathy Dalton and Ann Peterson. Okay, and so basically, Stan, just tell us real briefly uh, your background, your business background, because I know you do have a business background, and also uh, your background experience as far as I know you've served on the Downtown Development yeah. Authority. Well, I I've got over 44 years of business experience. My wife and I have lived in the city of Rochester for 23 years, and because I've lived here that long, I've actually lived here longer than I live with my parents. So this is now my hometown. Um, I was a first lieutenant in the United States Army. I served. I was uh, an executive with Roch or with I'm sorry with uh, Chrysler for 31 years. I retired in 2004. Um, I was owned the Silkworm downtown with my wife for 10 years. We just sold it this March, and I served on the Downtown Development Authority Board of Directors for eight years. I was chairman of that board for two years. With those eight years of city government experience, I actually have more city government experience than any current candidate running. The two incumbents only have four years experience. So I have a lot of experience. I have participated in the, uh, the budget exercise on the, from the DDA side, and I participated two years ago as the DDA re representative to the city in the budget uh, meetings. Speaking of the DDA, it seems like, I mean, I, we've attended as the Rochester citizens several of the uh, Rochester City Council meetings. And it seems like, this is an impression I get, that Jeff Cuthbertson, the current mayor, and some of his uh, friends on the council, if you will, uh, seem to have it in for the DDA. Do you, do you share that view? And, and if so, why, why do you think uh, the mayor is, is trying to, in some, at least in my mind, trying to do away with the DDA? Well, I mean, if you ask the mayor that, he would deny it, but his actions speak differently. Um, they have essentially taken over, the mayor has taken over the DDA, he's appointed Ben Giovanelli, a councilman, as a voting member, even though uh, they have plenty of citizen candidates, um, which I know they have a, an attorney opinion that says it's okay, but the change in law which allowed it was supposed to be for small towns without sufficient volunteers. Rochester has always had a, a history of volunteerism, and there were more than enough volunteers to fill the seat without putting Mr. Giovanelli in. Uh, the mayor has tried to populate, not tried, he has populated the DDA with people who, who are like-minded and who think like him. Unfortunately, from where the DDA was when I was on there, we had people who were concerned greatly about the downtown, who made their livelihood in the downtown. You have people who are not so concerned. Um, the current uh, uh, chairman of the board um, was a resident. He has moved out of the city. Uh, he apparently has an office downtown, though that office address is not available to anyone. So there's some question in my per mind personally whether he meets the requirements to serve on the board. But this is the kind of this is the direction that the. Uh, that the mayor is taking the DDA. Um, they have edicted that the DDA must spend 60% of their income on uh, brick and mortar. Um, my opinion is that that's the wrong thing to do. The DDA board ought to be free to decide where the money is, is spent. Some years they may need 60% brick and mortar, other years they don't need it. Um, unfortunately, there's a term called uh, field of dreams in marketing. This means that you build something, you, ex you build something, you expect people to come. The reality is, other than in the movies, they don't. So um, what are some things, that, well, number one, I guess some things that, that you accomplished or helped accomplish on, while you were on the DDA that you're particularly proud of? And the uh, second question, after you finish that one, would be, uh, what direction, what are some things you'd like to do if you were elected to the city council that, you know, some things that you'd like to see the city accomplish uh, should you be elected and that you would put forward as, as some proposals okay. of your own? Um, 
one of a couple things I've accomplished. First of all, when I was when I was appointed to the DDA, one of the first things they did was make me the promotions chairman. Um, as, a, as a member of the board, they were looking for board members to be uh, active members and chairman of the of the various committees. Um, interesting thing because I had no experience in promotion at all, but I had a very good board. Um, I know how to work with people. I know how to write a plan and how to, how to work to the plan and then how to track that plan. We were able to grow the promotions committee and grow, the, grow all of the activities, make each activity better, add activities. Um, we were able basically to change the culture. By changing the culture of the promotions committee, we were able to change the culture of the entire DDA. When I first joined the DDA, it was a marginal operation. It, uh, we have a Main Street process that we follow. We have a, we have a, uh, we're, we're part of the Oakland County Main Streets Association, and as such, annually we're rated by them. When I first joined, we didn't do better than a 70% rating. By the time I left, uh, not only were we getting 100% ratings from uh, Oakland County Main Street, we were two years in a row a top 10 national uh, DDA. Quite frankly, the only reason we didn't win the national award is because there was a specific councilman who gave a, an interview to the Main Street newspaper and indicated that he didn't support the DDA and the national award is for a city, it's not for a DDA. So once they knew the council wasn't supporting the DDA, that threw out any opportunity we had to get an award. We also uh, were able to save a hundred year old railroad bridge. There's a railroad bridge, it's part of the city walk. It, it's between the uh, Main Street, or the uh, Rochester uh, uh, Mills Brewery and the uh, Royal Park Hotel. This is a 100-plus-year-old structure. It was repurposed probably 20 years ago to make it part of the city walk, and it was in jeopardy of falling down. Um, as a DDA, we, we were able to save that structure and give it another 100-year life. In, in looking at the various opportunities we had with that structure that was both the best choice from the historical preservation perspective and also the best choice from the financial perspective. Yeah, and so just uh, tell our readers a couple things if you were elected to city council that they might expect to see uh, you know, new ideas coming forth from you. Well there's, first of all I'd like to institute a culture of leadership in city council. This is not going to happen overnight. There's some inertia that has to be resolved. But first you have to create a plan. You have to, you have to be somewhat visionary. You have to look at it in the future. You have to say where is it you see the city going. Create a plan. Then you work with your department heads and your, and your uh, city manager to create detailed goals or steps to get there. You also have to establish priorities in how you're going to make decisions to direct the professional staff. So that's one thing I'd like to see change. Um, an example of how that's not working today, I'll give you two examples. Um, I think everyone would agree that a water and sewer system is a basic necessity of a system. This is, this is a system that must work without fail. Um, when, when this council took office, that, that system had a fund balance of $12 million. Uh, it is currently not paying its own way to the tune of a million dollars a year. Council has voted for the last three years running to, to fund a difference between what the city is collecting versus what it's being billed for water and sewer and have not taken on, they have not discussed openly any of the issues with, with the water and sewer fund. This is a fundamental issue of the city that needs to be openly addressed. Everyone needs to understand it, and then we need to tackle that problem and solve it. We have actually not one system, but five systems that are involved, and they all have infrastructure problems as a result of aging and other things. Now, I want to compare and contrast that with an activity which is currently going on. And this is an example of how, without uh, goals and objectives, you can wander. Currently, uh, City Council has directed the Planning Commission to create a uh, residential lighting ordinance. They want to regulate lights on the, on the private properties within the city. Uh, I reviewed the ordinance as it's written today and 
effectively 95% or more of the lights in residential exterior lights are in violation of the ordinance if it were enacted today. So if it's enacted today, everyone in the city is going to either have to be a scoff law or they're going to have to change their, change their exterior lights to conforming lights. Um, one option which has been offered is that they would um, grandfather all of these lights. If that happens, then all of the lights in the city effectively will grandfathered and they spent eight months of time of city planner time, build, billable time, city attorney billable time, and paid hours from city um, professional staff to create, a, create an ordinance which does nothing because they will then exempt every light in the city. So this is an example of how you can get involved in ordinances and, and start doing things when you don't have a plan and you don't have a direction. Uh, one of the, I guess, big arguments, if you will, that's going on in the country right now and it's affecting cities is over, you know, how we fund our cities, you know, whether there should be privatization of, of services across the board, and there seems to be a big move toward privatization. Would you say that you're in someone that's in favor of, you know, edging government out of providing services in favor of private corporations, or would you say that you think government works reasonably well and, and should be, you know, like the water, you mentioned the water system. I mean, was there any, ever a case where you would see privatizing the city's water system because there wasn't enough money and turning over to a private corporation? Well, half of the, half of the current city water system is uh, Detroit City Water and Sewer. So if you consider that privatization, um, to some degree we already have it. Uh, my, my sense is that that is on a case-by-case -case basis. You have to look at each situation and make a specific determination as to what's right for the residents of the city of Rochester. It's not, I don't think, an absolute, we're going to privatize everything, nor is it an absolute, we're going to manage it within our, with our own business. Um, there are lots of cases today where the various departments, as a result of cutbacks in staff, have to outsource business to, uh, to, to private companies in order to get the, get the job done. So um, I would take it on a case-by-case -case basis. I would look at it objectively. I would feel that we should have an open and honest discussion about it, publish the results, and make it, make it public. Another issue that, I, that I've seen anyway on the Rochester City Council with the mayor especially is, you know, he, he ran on, and I think Ben Giovanelli ran on, this whole idea of transparency. And yet, you know, as we've covered City Council, it seems like there's been a number of occasions where transparency has been lacking, to put it, to put it bluntly. And there have been secret meetings and things like that. Would you be in favor of making sure that uh, as much as possible is really transparent and make it a... I mean, you know, be a man of action rather than a man of words? Short answer is yes. Let me, let me expound on that. Uh, I want to give the current council credit for bringing the uh, council meetings to, to television and putting them on the web. I think that was a good step. Um, I don't think, I think that's where they stopped, though. I mean, they, they campaigned as transparency, as transparency candidates. They took one step and they stopped. Um, an example of that, you cannot find the current city budget status anywhere. The city council gets, gets a quarterly review of it, but that's not published. My sense is that as opposed to what the current process is today, where they annually approve the budget, and then each time a department head has to spend a significant amount of money, they specifically review for a second time the, uh, the expenditure. I would rather have a, a city uh, goals and objectives process, which includes a budget establishment, and then on a quarterly basis we have a, we have a public review of the status of the budget, the status of the operation of the various departments against their goals, and I would, I would favor having that being published and, and readily available on the city website. Um, the only thing you can find relative to budget on the city website currently is the prior year's um, audited and approved results. So you really don't know what the city is doing, you know, today. You know what they did last year, but if you're now, we are, we are nearly in October, we're 10 months, you know, 
know, 10 months into the year, we don't really know what the status, actually, the fiscal year is July 1, so we're four months into the year, I guess. But um, we don't really know the status of the city as it's running. One issue that uh, involved me personally and the Rochester Citizen that came up last year was the city's Facebook page. And uh, it seemed like they were not willing to, uh, they aren't willing to have a two-way conversation with the citizens and, or even the media. Uh, Mayor Cuthbertson, for example, after we wrote an unfavorable, unflattering article that, that he didn't approve of, uh, sent me a personally threatening letter uh, and, and, and said he was cutting off all communication with the press. Do you, do you feel like, or at least with us, do you feel like the uh, Facebook page should maybe be, rather than a one-way form of communication, that it should be opened up and being, be a two-way form of communication? Um, I would favor a two-way form of communication. I, uh, I, I favor that. When I'm chairman of the DDA, um, DDA is still that way, and I think if you don't allow two-way communication, then you, you you basically are violating the whole purpose of social media. The whole idea of a social media is to is to encourage conversation on, on a given topic. Um, to to restrict it, I think, makes the whole point of a social media um, invalid. So, you, so I mean, I, I personally think that the mayor should be willing to hear criticism as well as compliments, and that's why, you know, and the city council as well. So, that, like you say, the purpose of social media is a two-way conversation. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's a one-way conversation, they're just kind of yelling at us is the kind of way I take it. So, so you would be, though, in favor of opening that up again and, and allowing citizens to interact with their government and, and voice their concerns and well, complaints, I, I guess. I'd be willing to open it up for the first time because it's never been opened on the city website. It's just, okay, it's more of an announcement system versus it's an a it's, social it's media. It's currently system. an announcement system uh, for the for the city. Um, I kind of take the view that uh, that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and you need to learn from your mistakes. Um, and without critical review, you don't many times don't even know you're making a mistake. So I think you have to be willing to hear critical review. You have to be willing to internalize it and then you know whatever action you feel is appropriate after that you take um, just I guess last question I, I, I know you we talked off the record before we started you don't have a website but people can find you on uh, Facebook as yeah. I understand it um, is there any any other way that people can learn more about your uh, your campaign well uh, in, in the literature I'm handing out my cell phone is there uh, telephone number is two four eight four six two ninety five hundred. It's uh, turned on every day until the battery goes dead, uh, which is usually sometime in the evening. Um, and I encourage anyone who wants to call me and talk, talk to me about anything that's going on in the city or I guess any other topic they want to talk about, um, I'm, I'm always willing to listen. I may not be able to do anything, but I'm, I'm willing to listen and, and see what I can do. Okay, great. Thank you, Sam. Thank you.